Well, if you're a woman over, let's say, 40 or 45, and you're wondering, what's the deal with weight gain? Maybe you've never had a problem with weight gain before, but all of a sudden, 5, 10, 15, 20 pounds just appears out of nowhere. You, there's no explanation for it. And the hard thing is you can't seem to get rid of it. So what's going on? By the end of this video, I hope you're gonna feel a whole lot better about your own weight gain. You'll feel better because you'll know the why behind that weight gain that happens around perimenopause and menopause. But more importantly, you'll have a three-step action plan to start losing some of that weight and feeling like yourself again. I'm Steve Goldring from simplehormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources. Most of those resources are about hormone optimization. Now, when we talk about weight gain patterns, it's very common during the perimenopause period and then menopause. And when I say perimenopause, I mean the four to six years before you go into menopause or before you have your last menstrual period. Uh, the studies seem to show that it really starts in the perimenopause time and then extends into menopause. And some people have a uh, more dramatic weight gain right after they go into menopause and some right before they go into menopause but in any case it doesn't really matter it's all around the perimenopause and menopause transition most commonly that comes in the form of belly fat that's fat that's two places it's both inside your abdomen around your organs but also outside around your belly sometimes it's only inside and so you can't really tell in looking at a person but if you were to have a, an ultrasound or various other scans of your body uh, there are some scales that can do a body composition uh, measurement those can probably tell whether you have visceral fat which is fat that's inside around your liver and your kidneys and all of your internal organs this internal fat and the external fat both come on very quickly within a few months or a year and the major thing is they don't want to go away. So no matter how much you eat like a bird or you exercise an hour or two hours a day, five, six days a week, it doesn't seem to make any difference. So here are a couple of things that you need to know about your weight gain during perimenopause and menopause. First of all, it's not your fault. This is partially under the control of your hormones. It's not about your uh, willpower. It's not about your character. It's not about any decisions that you're making. Sure, there, there are some things that you can do to help, but this is really primarily about the loss of your hormones, especially if you've experienced this sudden weight gain that seems to have come out of nowhere. I've had lots of women use that phrase. One of the things that we have to think about is this idea that everyone buys, and that's the idea of calories in equals calories out. So of course, everyone assumes this is true, that the amount of food that you eat has to be burned off in the amount of exercise that you do. But that's a little bit too simplistic of a way to look at weight gain. What we have to also add into this equation, besides calories in, calories out, which are a factor, but what we also have to add is the fact that hormones have a major control on your metabolism. That's how your body uses energy. Hormones also have a lot of control over your weight, whether you're gaining weight or losing weight. Now, the three hormones that have the biggest effects on weight gain around the perimenopause and menopause transition are number one, thyroid. If your thyroid level is too low, and I'm talking about two different thyroid hormones, T3 and T4, if those are too low, then your metabolism is going to slow down and you're going to burn less energy. And that in itself is going to cause you to gain weight. That's a very common situation in women heading into menopause or in the late perimenopause time period. The second hormone I want to address is insulin. Insulin is often high in perimenopause and especially in menopause. And after a while, if your insulin level is high, that usually results from high levels of blood glucose, and then insulin levels go up because of the high levels of blood glucose. When that happens over a long period of time, it's kind of like noise. If you're in a noisy environment all the time, eventually you can't really hear the noise. It doesn't really affect you because it, you, you tune it out. Well, that's what happens with your insulin. As your insulin is high for a long period of time, say months or years, eventually your body gets to the point where it sort of 
tunes out insulin and it doesn't really pay much attention to insulin and insulin doesn't really work anymore. That's a situation called insulin resistance. Uh, I have an entire video that's all about how optimizing that one essential hormone, insulin, can make a huge difference in protecting you from nine out of the top 10 causes of death in the US. Now, the third hormone that I wanna mention is estradiol. When you're in perimenopause, your estradiol, one of the female hormones, tends to go way high and way low. It'll be bouncing up one day and really low the next. So it's a little hard to chase in perimenopause before you've stopped having your periods. But after you stop having your periods and you're actually in menopause, that's when estradiol really starts to slow down and eventually you get to a place where your estradiol level is maybe not quite zero, but almost zero. And very low estradiol causes a number of major symptoms in menopause. The most prominent one is hot flashes. The second most common is weight gain. When your estradiol is very low, you're very likely to gain some weight. And that's why women at the beginning of menopause tend to have a bump in their weight, five, 10, sometimes even 20 pounds. And the fact that their estradiol remains low is a major reason why they can't take that weight off. So what is it that you can do about the weight gain that comes on in perimenopause and menopause? Well, I'd suggest three different things. The first is I'd recommend that you talk to me about getting a referral for a hormone optimization specialist. That's a doctor, a nurse practitioner, or a physician's assistant who really understands optimizing your hormones and really understands what it means to make sure that your thyroid level is optimized, that your insulin level is optimized, and that your estradiol level, among other hormones, are all optimized. Now, the second thing that I'd recommend you do is take a look at your diet, your sleep, and the, the times that you eat. Those are three key areas that can have a huge impact on insulin sensitivity versus insulin resistance. So if you reduce the amount of sugar and carbohydrates that you eat, that can reduce the amount of sugar in your blood, which in turn can reduce the amount of insulin which means there's less insulin around and maybe your body's gonna pay more attention to it and increase your insulin sensitivity. If you finish your dinner at say 7 p.m. every night and you don't eat anything until uh, eight, nine, 10 in the morning, that gives you an extended overnight fast. When we snack in between meals and snack late at night, that increases our insulin level and eventually that can lead to insulin resistance or reduced insulin sensitivity. Now, the other thing I wanna mention in regard to insulin is sleep. If you increase the quantity and the quality of your sleep, that can help reduce insulin resistance and increase insulin sensitivity. So the last thing you're gonna to wanna to take a look at is have your hormone optimization specialist evaluate your estradiol level. As I mentioned, in perimenopause, those levels are gonna be all over the place. And so it's probably not that great of an idea to give you estradiol when it may actually end up being super high tomorrow and maybe super low the next day. So giving you estradiol during the perimenopause period, sometimes it happens, but it's usually not the best plan of action. When your estradiol level drops to nearly zero, it's very likely that you could have some major low estradiol symptoms like hot flashes and in this case, weight gain. And this is where your hormone optimization specialist could prescribe an estradiol replacement to get your estradiol back up to an optimal level. Now, there's gonna be some other hormones that that specialist will also wanna look at in addition to those three, thyroid, insulin, and estradiol. But those are the three that are gonna have the biggest impact on your weight gain as you go from the perimenopause period into the menopause period. So if you're a woman in perimenopause or menopause, I'd love to help you try to find a hormone optimization specialist in your area. I know lots of them all over the US and even some in Canada and other countries. Visit the link on this video that says find a hormone provider and I'll look for somebody in your area. I can't guarantee that I know somebody in your town because I have no control over where you live or where the doctors live, but I'll give it my best shot. If you are a hormone optimization specialist and you'd love to help some of these perimenopausal 
and menopausal women with their weight gain, I'm sure you have some experience and some success stories in that very area. I'd love to put you on my hormone provider database. So click the other link on my video that says join provider database, and I'll do my best to connect you with patients in your area who need some help. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you like this video and you found it helpful, click the like button and then click the subscribe to make sure you get notified anytime I post a new one. We'll look forward to talking to you again soon.